Hello, and welcome to another episode... Ooh. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Danich Kimak II, and I am the Digital Painter. I know it's been a couple weeks since I've put up some videos. My... I, I won't call it my real job, but the job that allows me to live in a house and drive a car uh, took me away for a couple weeks down to Pittsburgh uh, doing some design work for a theater camp down there. Uh, very, very extensive work, very, very tiring work. To give you an idea, uh, over two weeks, um, there were two days, a tech and performance day, where I literally slept in the light booth on an inflatable mattress uh, because we went from 8 a.m. till midnight and then 8 a.m. till midnight again. And that's an hour and 15 minute drive and I just did not want to drive home and drive back. So that kind of kept me very, very busy. That is finished. I finished uh, just a couple days ago, uh, actually yesterday. And uh, tomorrow's my birthday, July 18th. Woot woot, turning 38. So I'm back, hopefully gonna do a couple of videos for this week so that I can kind of catch you guys back up and then we'll keep on rolling. Uh, real quick before we go further though, big shout out to my Patreon supporters. It is uh, you guys that help uh, and allow me to make these videos, to host these videos. And uh, I wanna thank you for, e for everything that you guys do. For those that don't know, uh, I'm on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the digital painter. And that's a, essentially a tip jar. You know, if you like what I do, uh, you can tip me. And so I've got several uh, Patreon supporters right now. A uh, big thank you to all of them and everything they do. It's been very, very helpful uh, allowing me to do these videos and host them uh, and not have my wife kick my butt because I'm spending all of our money. <laughs> uh, so if you, even if you have a dollar, check it out. If you don't, don't worry. The videos will continue to keep coming. They're not going to stop. Uh, don't forget to check out www.thedigitalpainter.com as well. This week, we are continuing our Procreate series of videos, and we're going to be talking about, as you can see on the screen right now, the color wheel. Now, one of the things I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and be a little more um, cognizant of the way I'm teaching. I had a wonderful commenter uh, let me know that, you know, sometimes I rush through things, and I think they're right. Uh, there are times that I definitely um, am not extremely specific on what I'm doing. So uh, I'm going to try and talk through things as best I can, and we'll see how things turn out, won't we? Uh, all right, so the color wheel over here. To get the color wheel, you hit the circle in the upper right-hand corner. Boom. And it opens up the color wheel. Now, color wheel is something that you see on most uh, digital painting applications, and... Procreate is no different, though their color wheel has changed. I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. This is the main screen of the color wheel. You'll see it's a circle. The outer circle, and you'll see that I'm spinning around it right now, the outer circle is your hue. For those that don't know, that's a fancy term for color. Okay. The inner circle, which I'm now moving around here, deals with your tint shades and tones of that specific hue. So for example, the hue I have right now on the outside is a blue. A tint of that hue up here is a light pale blue. A shade of that blue down here is an inky blue. And then a tone of that blue is roughly about right there. To get a tint, you add white. To get a shade, you add black, and to get a tone, you add gray. And so that's what that middle wheel is doing. Now, honestly, when I work with a color wheel, I prefer to have a triangle in the middle so that the three points of the triangle are white, black, and your hue without any white or black in it. So the circle is okay. It works. Um, it's just a little harder to find that you know saturated hue, that single color. Okay, but it gives you a lot of variation. Right above your color wheel, you'll see right now there's two colors, a green and a red. That shows you the color that was there when you opened up your color wheel on the left and the color that you've currently picked right now. If before you close the color wheel, you want to get back to that original color, 
just touch that bar up top that has the two colors and you'll see it goes back to the original color and you can then once again start to maneuver around. On the bottom you'll see a color palette. We're going to look at how to create our own color palette and even share color palettes. And then on the top left you have a hamburger menu. We're going to hit that hamburger menu. Now for those that don't know, a hamburger menu is a, for what I call a hamburger menu are those menus that have the three lines like the one in the top left here. So I hit it and here we come into another way to pick specific colors. If you know the RGB values, you can type them in. If you know the hex code, you can type it in. Now, I think the hex code for me is a little more important because everything on the web is colored in a hex code. So if you're doing uh, something that perhaps design work, logo design, and you need a specific color based on the colors of a company, you can type in the exact hex code and get the color that they expect to see. I think that's pretty nifty. That's all you're going to see on this page. So for example, let's go to green and change it to 54 and change our red to 68 and our blue to 244. Okay, so now we've created a new color. When you hit the arrow that is next to the color values label, you go back and you can see the color that you've actually typed in is now chosen. Again, down on the bottom, you'll see my palette. I'm gonna hit the arrow to the right. You see my palette, and then there's an arrow to the right of that. And that brings up your palettes dialog. You'll see I've got a couple of like Letraset Pro Marker Grays, PL Normals, and then these migrated ones are ones from when uh, the what uh, before they went over to the new color wheel. A couple of notes about our palettes. First off, a single finger swipe to the left brings up the ability to delete or share. I'm actually going to take my migrated palette too, and I'm going to delete it. And now it's gone. Don't have to deal with it anymore. Okay. You can also share. We're going to do that in a minute. You can import. So if I click import, you can import from a variety of locations. You can see here. You can even click locations. And there are more. You can import from. Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, etc. I don't have any in there right now, so I'm not going to pull those up. I'm going to click done. You, yeah, import unsuccessful because I didn't import anything. You can create your own palette hitting the plus sign in the top right. We're going to go ahead and label it. To label it, you touch the label, which is currently untitled palette. I'm going to label mine the digital. A uh, painter uh, palette. Okay. Now you'll see the blue check mark next to the digital uh, painter palette. If I touch my palette, you'll see the blue check mark moves. And then I'm going to touch again the digital painter palette. Now, if we hit the arrow to the left next to the palette's title, you'll see down bottom, we now have my digital painter palette. So how do we add colors to our palette? Very, very simple. All you do is touch one of the boxes in the palette and the color that is chosen will then be added. So let's add this. Let's add this. And let's add this. I've now added four colors to my palette. You don't have to add them in a row you can indeed add them out of order if you wanted to, such as that, okay? But that's not all. This is where I think it also becomes kind of powerful. You'll see in my layers, I have an imported image. I'm going to open up that imported image. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to color pick from this imported image. If you look on the left hand side of my screen, between my two sliders, you'll see a little box. If I press, on, hold on, press and hold on that box, and then move my other finger around the screen, you'll see it's color picking. That color that I just chose, 
And let me do that again so everybody sees. So I press and hold. I'm going to choose one of my reds in here. Let's choose that red. Has now been chosen on my color wheel. I can now hit an empty box and that color is added to my palette. I can do that again to grab, say, this green. And let's also grab, let's say, in here. And one more, we'll grab this color. So I've just grabbed four colors from that color palette. This is actually kind of cool if you want to choose a color palette based on a picture. Say, you know, you've got a picture, uh, a, a landscape photograph, and you want to pull colors from it and use that in, an, uh, in a painting. Boom, right there, can do it very easily. Now, real quick, as I said, it, it, the way mine is set up is if you press and hold the square and then move your finger around, that's how I get my color picker. That can be edited if you go into the wrench and under preferences go to the bottom and click advanced gesture control you can see my eyedropper tool is actually set up in a variety of ways which is I can just tap the square I can hold the square and touch or I can hold the square and Apple pencil okay there's also a quick menu now which I'm not gonna get into this week but if you press and hold, you'll see I now have a quick menu. We'll get into that later. So for me, like I said, I like to press and hold the square and then use my other finger to move around and choose my color. Okay. So I have my color palette. I go back into my palettes menu and let's say I want to share it with somebody. You Again, single finger slide to the left and you click share and this comes up and you can share it I'm gonna do something cool here I'm gonna share it into my Google Drive there it is ends and dots watches we're just gonna upload it and now what I'm gonna do to show you how to import back to the top now the way I did that is I scrolled single finger down and it brought up the import swatches. We're going to import from. We're going to look at our locations. We want more. I'm pretty sure I put that in my Google Drive, so I'm going to turn that on. So Google Drive. And I don't know which Google Drive I put it in. <laughs> So let's see, is it in this one? It would end in swatches, and it was the digital painter, if I believe. It appears I did not save it in this one. So, oops. Don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to share it one more time. And this time I'm going to pay attention a little more. I did do Google Drive. We'll put it in the Digital Painter Drive. The Digital Painter Palette Swatches. Oh, it's not shared. Okay. And our final share. Ah, there we go. All right. So now it should be there under the digital painter palette swatches. So let's try importing them. We're going to import from our locations, Google Drive. We know it's this one now. Oops. No, 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 no. Look. 
I have very delicate fingers and apparently they are hitting the screen one too many times. Ah, there they are. Now, unfortunately, they are grayed out. So I'll have to find out. Now, one of the things that might be happening is it might still be uploading to the drive. Hence the reason I can't actually select them. Generally speaking, what's gonna happen is you're already going to have it in one of your folders and you'll upload it. Now, again, I didn't have any available with me so that's why I'm not importing any but again that is how I got my Letraset Pro Marker Grays and my PL Normal somebody had posted them I had then imported them in in this way all right that's going to be it for this week I hope that you uh, picked up a little bit about the color wheel uh, if you have any questions make sure to leave a comment in the youtube video or if you're watching this on the digitalpainter.com what you can do is leave a message there if you are watching this on youtube hit that subscribe button i love to see new subscribers on the channel and um that's about it if you're out in the midwest this week make sure you take care of yourself it's supposed to get a little warm a little hot uh drink plenty of water stay safe and uh continue painting and i look forward to seeing what you come up with all right, that's it for this week. Take care.